the traditional bell to begin our program today. I want to sincerely thank you for coming out to this State of the City Charity Luncheon, hosted by the Taylor Rotary Club. Uh, we've been doing this for over 20 years, and just to let you know, all the money raised today will go to different charities throughout our community. So thank you for your generosity of being here. At this time, I'd like to invite Mayor Tim Woolley and Ryan and Pastor Ryan Vetcher to please come and begin the program. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we decided last night we wanted to start this thing off with uh, you know just a few little words. Um, hopefully, I, I think many of people will probably now know, and if they don't, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Um, on Monday, we lost uh, my former colleague and my friend, Angela Croft. Um, very sad situation. Um, it was one of the most difficult phone calls I've received from uh, my police chief. Uh, Angie was truly my friend. She was a beautiful person, had a beautiful soul, wanted to help everybody that she possibly could. That's one thing I've always loved about Angie. She had a great sense of humor. Me and her would joke and kid all the time. I will probably miss her laugh the most. So uh, if everybody would bear with me and take a moment of silence for our friend uh, Angie Cole. Thank you, everyone. Um, Pastor Ryan Bettinger will start us with the invitation. Thank you, Mayor Woolley, for inviting me to be a part of this and uh, Larry for uh, organizing and helping uh, with this with the Rotary. Let's unite our hearts together in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you, and even as we just mentioned, and uh, both locally and, and even on a state level, Father, this has been uh, a rough week uh, on a lot of fronts. And Father, we know that your word teaches us that you are near to the brokenhearted, and you rescue those whose spirits have been crushed. And Father, that would adequately describe kind of what many people are going through in our city, in our state, and even in families, Father, that have been affected. So God, we ask that you would allow your peace and your presence to be near to all of those that are, are affected. And uh, God, we just thank you that you are near uh, in these times. And Father, we do know that uh, with the state of the city address that's happening today, Father, that we are also gathering to ask your blessing on this city that we love and we want to see thrive. And so, God, I ask that you would just continue to give wisdom and clarity to all of those in leadership, Father, that you would protect those that serve in this city. And, Father, I pray that you would bless their families as they have sacrificed so much. And uh, as many times their parents are gone and uh, serving this city in meetings and everything else, Father, we just ask that you would just bless and protect the families that are involved. And, God, we just uh, are thankful for this opportunity to gather to celebrate, and God, may we be united on this front of wanting to see this city be the best city that it can be, and uh, Father, we'll be careful to praise you for all that you do for us. It's in the name of your son, Jesus, I pray and ask these things. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Uh, one of the traditions that we have in Rotary at the beginning of each meeting is we like to all stand, if you would, and join me in singing my country, tis of the Pick up the volume a little bit as we begin this program. Again, I want to thank you all for being here. Um, just want to take a few moments to tell you a little bit about the Taylor Rotary Club, my home club. Uh, we are housed here at the Lakes of Taylor. 
But the club was formed in 1945, and that makes us about 78 years old. It's basically a service organization of like-minded people who want to give back to their community. And so we have quite a few Rotarians. It's the oldest, and it's one of the largest service organizations in the world. And we're very blessed to be here in the city of Taylor. I want to just take a couple of moments, show you a couple of things, uh, some of our upcoming events. And, uh, but I want to, first of all, recognize, I'm not the president, I'm just a person at the microphone, but our president this year, please stand and welcome Alice Prusak. <laughs> so some of our special events that we have throughout the year begins right here, the state of the city. As I said, we've been doing it for over 20 years, and we couldn't do it without the blessings of our wonderful mayor, Tim Woolley, allowing us to do this, but also supporting us the way he has. He's actually joined Rotary. He's one of our newest, and I'm going to tell you, from the bottom of my heart, one of the best Rotarians we have in our club. Thank you, Mayor, for being a part of our club. Uh, over the last year, we started a very interesting organization just for the city of Taylor, and it's called the Taylor Rotary Business Alliance, and the idea is to have like-minded business people come together. And as the slide kind of points out, we have quarterly meetings. We network during those meetings, and we try to learn something. So we have the support of the city, and many times we have some of the city officials here to kind of tell us, give us an update on what's going on in the city. We also have some of the department heads here. So if you're a small business person in Taylor, we'd like to just be involved. There's no dues right now. There's no dues. Um, but we'd love to have you join us. We meet right here, typically quarterly. The next one will be coming up in a couple of months. The, the next one is an event that we are so excited. We did it last year for the first time. We call it Touch a Truck. How many of you have ever heard of Touch a Truck? Yeah, not that many. So it's an opportunity that we bring together for, an, for a morning all of these big trucks and loaders and just anything huge, construction, what have you for families to bring their kids. How many young children have been able to get up in a big wheel loader eight feet off the ground? Or be in the, go up to a police officer in the car and see him, go to a SWAT truck. We have an amazing event. And I couldn't do it without the support of Beacon Baptist Church and the First Albanian Church in Taylor. There are supporters and we use their facilities to have this. And this year it's going to be June 17th it's a Saturday, just before Father's Day, and we are encouraging any businesses who have a special vehicle, whatever that might be, to come and join us. As you can see, we have a Har Motown Harley-Davidson was there with their motorcycle on a trailer that people could get on. And uh, anyway, the kids and the families loved it, and so it's a great event called Touch a Truck. Uh, following that, we, ha we have this amazing fundraiser for our veterans. And I, I will say right now, how many people here are veterans? Please raise your hand. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. And it's because of that service that we do, do this event. We've been doing it about eight years now. And the money we raise, every penny we raise, goes to two charities. One of them is Down River for Vets, and the other is Foundation 14. Last year, we raised a record $35,000 to split between those two. So we would encourage you to get involved with us for this uh, Wounded America ride, which will start uh, on July the 8th, it's a Saturday, at Motown Harley Davis. You'll be getting a lot of information in the meantime, so please support us where you can. The next one is on uh, September the 15th. We have what's called Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. We hold it at Rotary Park, which is on Telegraph in front of the State Police, put next to State Police. We have baseball diamonds there. And uh, people come out to help support our police. We have food and beverage and so on for all the, our police and first responders that day. Amazing event. And then we have a softball tournament. And I will tell you, last year, we had the Taylor PD against the State Police. Anybody want to guess who won? Taylor PD. Taylor! Congratulations, Taylor. And then the last one I just want to point out, 
is October the 7th, Saturday, right here at the Lakes of Taylor. We're going to have our big cla fall classic golf outing. And uh, again, I, I want to thank you all for being here and being supportive of this luncheon. All the money we raise goes back to the charities here, many of them you've seen on the screen. So if you want to make a donation to us afterwards, please see uh, Laura Fennell out back, or by the front, rather. Uh, I do want to make one more quick recognition. And there's a gentleman in this room who is retiring next month. And I know we're all envious of that. But this guy has given over 40 years at Pennerton Center for Blind Children here in Taylor on Lang Road in, in Eureka. And he's retiring. And I want to recognize my good friend, Kurt Siebeli. time also we want to recognize a very special person with us today and that person uh, we look for someone who's done some amazing humanitarian and charitable things in this community and I think we've got one of the best ever and uh, I'm going to ask Michelle Matney to please come forward and help me with this presentation thank you Michelle Okay, we are going to recognize, and you will all know this man, Reverend Dr. Jeffrey Trutchess. Would you please come forward and join us? Yeah. Today? <laughs> I want to read to you a few things. This is, I, I'm going to paraphrase a bunch of this, but let me tell you what I'm going to tell you is amazing in and of itself. The Reverend Dr. Jeffrey Drutchess is the founding president of Fish and Lowe's Community <coughs> Food Pantry, a nonprofit, ecumenical, non sectarian organization providing emergency, long term food assistance to qualifying households in need. Under Dr. Drutchess' volunteer leadership, Fish and Lowe's has grown into the largest, largest client choice pantry in the state of Michigan, serving eight downriver communities and providing a prominent model for other pantries across the state. He is also the co-founder and past president and executive director of ChristNet, which provides both night and daytime shelter and emergency care for homeless men, women, and children in Western Wayne County. For almost 35 years, Dr. Drutchess has served as senior pastor at St. Paul United Church of Christ on Goddard Road in Taylor, he has resigned the pulpit at the close of 2022. Dr. Drutchess is well known across Detroit metro area as a community leader. Dr. Drutchess has written extensively on community issues as well as bioethics and art history. He's the author of Is Life Sacred? Pilgrim Press. He's also lectured at Wayne State University, Tufts University, and City University of New York. Dr. Drutchess is a Phi Beta Kappa graduate of Michigan State University and a St. Lawrence, uh, excuse me, and Harvard University, where he was latterly both a John Haynes Holmes Fellow and St. Lawrence Fellow. He's also studied at Wayne State University Law School and Syracuse University. He holds a doctorate in Christian ethics from the Lancaster Theological Seminary. He's married to his lovely wife, Eileen Werner and he holds a doctorate in Christian ethics, as I said. For these and many, many other things that he's done in our community, we are proud to reward him, recognize him with this Paul Harris Fellow. Please join me in recognizing Reverend Jeffrey Drutchess with our Paul Harris Fellow recognition. <laughs> Michelle Mantley would like to add a few words, please. Wow, what a beautiful audience today. What a beautiful time to honor sets of a gem to our community. A time to honor him for all the wonderful things that he's done in our community. I am so proud to call him my friend, and I'm so proud of all the things and so many lives that he has touched. So right now, I would like to introduce Jeff. This uh, Paul Harris, um, honor is especially meaningful 
to me because for a decade I was a member of Rotary here in Taylor, and it was the responsibilities of both Fish and Lowe's and ChristNet that ultimately uh, prompted me to step away. Uh, I did work for my church as well, work for God there, and had to always balance uh, concerns. I do want to say I have really been blessed uh, to be a part of the Taylor community uh, the many years that I've served in St. Paul and through the ChristNet Shelter and the Fish and Loaves Community Food Pantry. Uh, what has been accomplished here in this city and for this area is made possible by the people themselves, by all of you. Uh, one of the things that uh, uh, was just said to me uh, two years ago uh, in looking at the possibility of sharing the model of fish and loaves at the community food pantry elsewhere, uh, uh, there are a lot of attempts made to replicate it that failed. And uh, the, the uh, past head of the Ford Company Fund said to me, we've come to the conclusion that the circumstances in the downriver communities are just so unique, they were able to sustain these kinds of programs and they may not be so readily replicable elsewhere. Again, that's a testimony to the downriver communities and the, the spirit that we have of working together, collaborating together. But it's not uh, an accident that both ChristNet and Fish and Loaves were launched right here in Taylor, one of the few suburban communities that is truly a city because of its socioeconomic complexity. Those who are well-to-do, those not well off, uh, and yet uh, folks with real heart and understanding who our neighbor is and uh, the importance of taking care of one another. So whatever I've been able to, to accomplish in, in terms of providing leadership uh, has only been successful because of this community and all that it does every day to make sure that this is the best possible place in which to live <coughs> and, uh, raise families. Uh, I am honored to be here today to receive this, and uh, God bless all of you. Thank you. At this time, This time, it's a pleasure to introduce Mr. Carl Zymack. Editing. Hey, good morning. Uh, now for a few housekeeping items. Sam, if you want to advance that, thank you very much. Uh, first, introducing, uh, and if you if you if you are here, you can stand, save your applause for the end. I'm going to introduce a few different groups here. Uh, first, our elected officials right here in the city of Taylor: uh, Mayor Tim Willey, uh, City Clerk Cindy Bauer, Treasurer Michelle Toko, Council People Doug Geis, Joe Brandana, Angie Winton, Charlie Johnson, Butch Ramick. Iris Slavin and Lindsay Rose, and our Chief Just Judge Victoria Shackelford and Judge Joseph Slavin. Let's hear it for all those people. <laughs> On the next screen are many of our department heads and team leaders in the city of Taylor. Because of their e efforts, this uh, community runs very smoothly led off there by Chief of Staff Dan Bazura. Uh, if you work for the city of Taylor, please stand and let's have some applause for all of our employees. <laughs> all right, you guys can sit down now and go back to work. Uh, <laughs> all right, our county and state officials, elected leaders, are. Uh, County Commissioner Raymond Basham, State Senators Darren Camilleri and Erica Geis, and State Representatives Jamie Thompson and James DeSena. If you're here, please stand. We <laughs> applause for all of you. Great to see you. Thank you, Jim. Great to see you. Alrighty, our federal officials, uh, Shri Tanadar 
is our new uh, U.S. representative, and our state senator, or excuse me, U.S. senators are Debbie Stabenow and Gary Peters. As always, we have uh, several other important leaders from both Taylor and across the Downriver area, greater metro Detroit area, who are in, uh, who are here today. I'd like you to be, to stand and be recognized too. Uh, mayors uh, of Romulus, Robert McCray. <laughs> of Dearborn Heights, Bill Vazzy. <laughs> of Westland, Michael Londo. <laughs> and of Riverview, Andrew Swift. All right, former judges, Tony Nasita and Gino Salamone, where are you guys? Where are you guys? Where are you guys? Good to see those gentlemen. Griff Mills and our various uh, Taylor School officials. I saw Greg Bazura and Sam Pizzo here from the Junior League World Series. Jim Perry from the DCC, an old friend of mine. Where are you, Jim? I know you're hiding somewhere. There you are. And Ron Heinrich of our local chamber here. Ron? Fantastic. Alrighty. I'd also like to salute all of our veterans. If you don't stand, a little applause. I know you got some before, but uh, all our veterans stand. And we For your service. Okay, at this time uh, we have three speakers leading up to the mayor's keynote address. First up is a man who is going to tell us about the many uh, new and exciting things happening in the Parks and Recreation Department, introducing Guido Yulin, our Director of Parks and Rec. Hey, good morning everyone. A lot of familiar faces. Uh, I want to thank the mayor for giving Parks and Recreation the opportunity to have a moment at the State of the City, and uh, also uh, the Parks team, we consider our city council great teammates of ours. So I want to thank you guys for supporting everything we endeavor to do to try to improve programs and recreation in the city of Taylor, which is near and dear to us. So thank you. We'll start uh, high level, Heritage Park. Uh, it's the gem of the city. Um, we do put a lot of investment into it. Um, the caboose, train car, they were having some major issues, and as you can tell by the photos, a big investment went into those to restore them to the history. We didn't just want to put metal siding on them. We, they were restored with a historical expert to fit the time frame that they were used in, and I think uh, the photo opportunity that they present now for visitors at Heritage Park uh, is just an exceptional uh, backdrop for them to use, and we're very proud of how the finished product turned out. We are adding, uh, one of the big uh, missions we've been on is to light. We have roughly a little quarter mile path that circles Heritage Park Lake. We wanted to expand, we have lighting around it, which is great in fall season, winter season for those who still like to get out. Lighting induces safety, people feel more comfortable. Uh, with the mayor's permission, we found a way to fund and move forward with lighting our entire one mile walking path that goes around the entire Heritage Park campus. That will be coming hopefully in the next few months. Items will be going out and we should be securing the bids to make that a reality. So we're very proud to make that happen. We know that's been a big concern and wish of the citizens. So we're very proud to make that happen in 2023. Um, activity building. Uh, you're always trying to find affordable options to offer residents for whatever it may be, a family reunion, a wedding. Uh, we've been able to renovate currently going on, as you can see, construction in that building, and it's going to be a 220 capacity. The measurements I gave were incorrect, so I do apologize for that. Uh, when it's renovated, it's going to be a rentable space for weddings that could be hosted at Heritage Park Church. You can just walk over to the activity building. You never have to leave. The backdrop is Heritage Park, so you can capture all your memories. It's going to be just a great uh, renovation when it's done. We're very proud to be able to make that one happen also. Close proximity to the activity building, the Heritage Park Church, which roughly almost three years ago had a fire. Uh, unfortunate, it happened. 
when it's all said and done, we're almost going to be at a million dollars of renovation into that structure. When I say when you guys see the finished product, obviously we took this picture. It's kind of sad. You can still see the boards as of today. Uh, the stained glass has not been completed, but once done, it'll be returned to what it was. But the updates and upgrades and the look is going to be exceptional. I think families who host weddings there, uh, when couples come together in unionship, it's going to be phenomenal. It's going to look top notch. We're very proud of the progress that we've seen. It's taken almost three years, but we're almost there. We're to the finish line. We think we'll get the keys back in April, so we're very happy about that. Recreation center renovations. A healthy community is a happy community. It's, 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 it's truly uh, cleanliness and friendliness. We put a huge investment by we, not myself, the citizens, with uh, council's approval, uh, roof, new paint, security cameras, a spin studio, batting cages, a cardio hit room, a new weight room, a new track floor. When I say no, no stone's been unturned, I, I can't tell you the investment that's went into this building and how proud we are, and I hope the citizens are proud to come there and use it. And anyone who visits us from neighboring communities, I hope that they enjoy the experience. It truly is, uh, it's been redone top to bottom, uh, almost complete. Um, so we hope to see everyone there, right? Especially after lunch today. Uh, and more renovations, as you can see, the new track floor has not gone in yet. Getting very close though. Uh, bathrooms have been upgraded, showers, all those items, those things that uh, need to happen to keep a building uh, current and, and performing well. Lane Park, this one's a big one, so um, at least in my time here, I've been, I've been at the city, gosh, I feel like I grew up here. Uh, but the investment into Heritage or to Lane Park, uh, we had a partnership with the county that made this possible. Uh, with us combining funds that we have, using funds that they were able to uh, merge with us, we're going to have a roughly a $5 million investment into this property on the south end of Taylor. As of right now, it doesn't have a great use, um, but when it's done, the opportunity that it's going to present for the residents of Taylor, neighboring communities, Wayne County, it's going to be a destination park. We're adding disc golf. We're adding Ford-style huge playscapes. We're going to have uh, biking trails, walking trails, a BMX uh, pump track. We're going to have a Tony Hawk skate park. The investment's going to be second to none, and outside of Heritage Park, I think this is the second biggest development the city has ever endeavored to do at one location of a park. So when this is said and done, I think this is going to be a sustainable recreational opportunity that the residents can enjoy for many years to come. Very proud of this. Can't wait for this one to become a reality. Spring of 2023, RFPs are going out. We're very excited. Oh, didn't go that far. We'll go back. Uh, in closing, guys, I know those are high-level things. We can always sit up here and say, oh, look what we got done. There's always room for improvement. We know there's always holes. We're always looking. We're always trying to improve. Um, I feel it's very important. Uh, I try to make myself accessible to residents. Anything that you guys can see that recreation can improve upon, we're always here. We're always listening. Um, in closing, you know, people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you make them feel. Inspire change. Be a good human being. Always try to go above and beyond. That's all I have, and I thank you guys very much for attending. Thank you, Guido. Uh, Taylor is a hotbed of business activity. Between the different types of planning reviews, <laughs> capital improvement plans, reports to city council, and recommendations, planning activity for the 2021-22 year totaled nearly 250 projects. In the middle of all of that is planning director Laura Fell, who is going to bring us up to date on business and development. Issues with supply chain, 
the steep rise in the cost of construction, and employment issues caused many projects to be slowed down, put on hold, and some even withdrew their project. It now appears some of these projects are finally moving towards completion. A new Big Big Coffee will be, is being built on Goddard, just west of Party. Taylor's two new hotels, the Fairfield Inn and Town Place Suites on Eureka, were on hold for a while due to inflation and costs of construction. Um, they're now commencing again, just west of I-75. Uh, on to redevelopment. Development. Empty buildings are being redeveloped. The Coliseum on Goddard, an empty, big empty uh, building, is turning into a self-storage called Storage Plus. Huntington Bank, another empty building on Telegraph Road, is now being transformed into two brand new restaurants. Uh, the newest concept of Buffalo Wild Wings, Buffalo Wild Wings to go, and a Corktown Pizza. On Eureka Road, uh, Eureka is continuing to lead the way in commercial development and new businesses. Southland Mall has added 14 new tenants over the last year. The Horizon Business Center has added seven new office uses to its building. Gardner White is now doing business in the former art van at Eureka and Rapco. Bubba's 33 continues to be a huge draw in Telegraph. Uh, Z's Bubble Tea is the newest uh, addition to Eureka's flourishing restaurant district. The exciting news is Chick-fil-A will soon be locating at the former Little Dad Daddy site in front of Southland Mall. New strip mall renovations such as the Fairline Shopping Center at Telegraph and Champagne and a beautiful brand new, uh, what we're calling uh, Pete's Plaza, just south of Pete's Place, are both continuing to add and attract new tenants. Van Board Road. The Planning Commission is currently reviewing ordinances for a new Van Born Gateway overlay. This project is a joint effort between Taylor and the City of Dearborn Heights to spark <coughs> improvements to the street, streetscape, businesses, and appearance, and the overall aesthetics of Van Born Road resulting in an attractive new business, business place, a safer, more pedestrian-friendly environment. Recently, uh, businesses such as the Pink Palm Beauty Salon, the Play Hive, an interactive learning center for preschool children, and a new church, Emmanuel Faith Outreach, have recently located along Van Bourne. Goddard Road, in our Midtown District, uh, the Old McGuckins has been taken over by Red's Pub. They're reoccupying and then keeping their pub alive there on Goddard. Savvy Sliders recently became a new tenant at the Midtown Plaza at Goddard and Pardee. Northline Road. Northline Road saw a state-of-the-art medical building constructed uh, just west of Telegraph Road, a new dialysis care center, and it's now open. Taylor's first Asian grocery store opened on North Line in Pardee, featuring Filipino and other Asian food items. Residential and new senior developments. Island Lakes uh, has been thriving. We have many, many new homes going up there. Cypress Gardens is continuing their subdivision build-outs. Racco Ridge, a new condominium development on North Line across from the college is beginning their construction. Brookwood Estates, formerly part of the Timbers Edge on Goddard, west of Telegraph, is now under construction on its 60-unit senior independent living development, and the first new building has just gone up. Hampton Manor at Superior and Pardee, the city's newest senior development, is near completion at the northwest corner of Pardee and Superior. It'll be a one-story, 72-unit senior assisted living complex. In industrial, uh, CMAC Transportation is constructing a 199,000 square foot industry, industrial facility on North Line Road. Unifirst, an industrial laundry, is relocating from Monroe to a brand new 
69,454 square foot building on Inkster Road. Along with the new construction, approximately 36 new industrial businesses came into the city over the last year. Existing remodels, even existing buildings that have been here for a while, have recently undergone uh, face changes and new improvements. Like I said, the city of Taylor is continuing to thrive. Uh, it takes a whole team effort in every department. Um, I want to say a special thank you to Susie Riddle. She's been helping me, and she is the best. I couldn't do what I do without her. And uh, once again, a thanks go out to all the departments, to our consultants, uh, Hennessy Engineers, Wade Trim, McKenna Associates, the City Council, the Zoning Board of Appeals, and the Planning Commission. Uh, it takes all of us to make this work. Thank you. Okay, I told you that Laura was busy. Uh, all right, let's go to our last speaker here before we get to the mayor. Uh, thanks again, Laura. Our final speaker is going to bring us up to date on new renovations, technology, and equipment in the law enforcement field. Introducing Police Chief John Blair. Come on up, John. Thank you, Carl. I really appreciate you putting me front uh, of the mayor, speaker. Everybody's always interested to talk to uh, to him and not me, so I appreciate that. And by the way, Mr. Mayor, um, I did have a couple of department heads that had volunteered next year ago. Uh, Ralph gave me the nod already. <laughs> copper, and I'm pretty sure Randy gave me the thumbs up too. <laughs> next year we'll get to, we'll get to them. So uh, we're going to talk to you today about some of the good things in the police department and some of the things that aren't so good. Hiring has been a problem nationwide for all police departments. City of Taylor has not been immune to that problem. Uh, fortunately, with our new collective bargaining agreements that uh, provide some incentives, bring in some new officers, we had 12 new full-time staff that were brought in. Uh, direct, directly helped us out to, to fulfill our mission. In addition to those 12 officers, we were also allowed to bring in three public service officers. Those are the individuals that answer the phones for us, uh, nearly 750,000 calls come into our police department each year. Now, those aren't calls for service, mind you, but those are phone calls that need to be answered and handled. So, okay, I'm probably hitting the wrong button on these things here. The van for me? All right. Uh, some of the technology that we've tried to implement to give us our full force multiplier include these flock cameras. Uh, we have two different styles of these flock cameras. One is a mobile version, which is on each one of your patrol vehicles that you see your officers drive around every day, as well as some stationary cameras. We now currently, as of today, have 20 stationary cameras. These cameras allow us to track vehicles that enter and leave throughout your city. Approximately 80% of all crimes are facilitated with vehicles. That's why these cameras and the technology that comes with them are so important for us completing our mission. Axon, uh, we are in the third year of a 10-year contract with Axon. They provide state-of-the-art equipment to us, including both in-car and body cameras. Um, our tasers is welcome with them, and some unique features where our officers can actually listen to someone, talk to them, hold up a driver's license in front of their camera, and those uh, words that talking will become text on the police report. So this technology is definitely uh, a time saver for us. It helps our officers do their job much more efficiently and something where we can be much more transparent with the public. A fleet of drones. These drones are an incredible uh, tool that have been provided to us. We currently have three drones that we utilize on a daily basis. We have five drone operators that are certified to operate these drones. I can tell you that uh, we're proposing by the end of this year to be able to dispatch a drone from the roof of the police department to handle any incident that would happen throughout the city of Taylor. Now, you guys might understand how important that is, but that is truly putting an eye in the sky for us. Uh, it's giving our officers a heads up of what they have in front of them. We can utilize these from any type of crime scene to simple things, as maybe even a missing person, sketching out crime scenes, handling any type of tactical situation. These drones are a valuable resource. We, we continue to uh, deploy them as our years going through. 
big expenditure here. I'm going to give you a, a, a mind-blowing number. Over $900,000 worth of Tahoes were purchased by the city of Taylor last year. $900,000. 16 Tahoes. These vehicles are state-of-the-art. They allow our officers to carry all their equipment and provide a safe and beautiful working environment for them each day. Renovations. These are some of our proud things. Uh, the police department was built from a historical sense way back in the late 80s. There's been very few renovations that have occurred in our department. Uh, we have had some flooring and some painting stuff done, but no, really the bones and the structure have not been changed. You're going to look over to my left here, and you're going to see a beautiful weight room. This weight room was donated fully by Planet Fitness. Over $125,000 just in equipment. That doesn't include all the man hours for the electrical that was put in, the painting that was done. Um, this, uh, what you're viewing here used to be a police garage. Uh, some of you may have worked in that garage. I saw Jim back there. A uh, greasy, nasty place has been transformed into this beautiful thing, which we believe makes you, your officers just that much more efficient. When we're out well, everything isn't beautiful. We, uh, we know everything perfect. Yeah, what you're looking at um, is a locker room. That locker room is an original, again, from the late 80s. Um, approximately a half million dollar budget has been approved for us to renovate not only the men's, the women's locker room, top to bottom. Everything's going to be placed in there. You can see it's in total disrepair. Uh, the lockers themselves are even being replaced. Many of them are rusted out. The bottoms of them are falling apart. Uh, the drawers um, are just not existing. Just before I take off, I just wanted to say thank you to many, many people. I can take forever up here, and I won't do that. Um, but our mission is not completed without many, many of you. Mayor Willie, Chief of Staff Missouri, our judges back there, um, you're truly our lifeline for law enforcement. Without you, we can't do things. So Judge Shackford and Slater, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, I know Guido, you had an opportunity to talk. Uh, you and Johnny. I can't tell you. Every time we have a problem, I can reach out to them and they take care of us. There's many, many others, whether it's DPW or Human Resources. Everybody works a little part in their role of running your police department to make yourselves and your families that much safer. So, thank you. All righty. Okay, let me get this. Correctly. Okay, uh, after last year's State of the City luncheon, my staff told me that I spent too much time at the podium, and the fact that I forgot to introduce the district court judges put me officially on notice as a participant in this event. So you're not the only one trying to get out of speaking here, John. Uh, so we decided to do something a little different to introduce the mayor. Uh, cue it up, Sam. We're with Amy Woolley. Amy, since your husband became mayor, has your life changed? So, you know, people have asked me that question. Has my life changed? Um, yes and no. I mean, there's been no grandiose change. We pretty much have the same lifestyle, you know. Um, one of my, my girlfriends, her I was over her house. Her husband had asked, you know, do, do, you, do you get to drive a new car? You know, or did you have to move into a different home? Do you have security? I'm like, nope, n none of that, you know. So <laughs> my, my life hasn't changed a lot in that respect. We, we do the same things, have the same lifestyle, live in the same home. Um, but it's it's gotten busier for Tim especially um, a lot more meetings. I, I guess I might say he wears a lot more suits, <laughs> and he's he's on his phone a lot. <laughs> this is Brett Hall? Okay, the Hall family has been extremely well connected, well embedded in the Taylor community your entire life, from your grandfather, your dad, uh, yourself. Uh, what did you see in Tim Woolley that you thought uh, that made you support him for mayor? Yeah, I think um, I think you're right with you know with my family. They've definitely been uh, a big part of Taylor since the '70s, and you know in the late '90s, early 2000s, Tim kind of became a good family friend. He was a coach of mine for a long time, and when he asked me to be a part of his campaign, um, you know, and help out with the financials, I had just graduated from college uh, with my master's, and I knew that I was able to give him the help he needed. 
and I knew he would have done it for me. So, you know, that was uh, an easy decision on my end. Gerald, you and Tim Woolley share common interests. Uh, you're both proud military veterans. Did those type of issues and feelings make you more comfortable uh, that Tim would be a successful candidate for that? Absolutely. Um, when you serve in the military, you have uh, like a brotherhood um, and a lot of common interest, and uh, that made it a lot easy for him and I to uh, to be able to meld and and to get along. As a former police chief in Taylor, what made you think that Tim Woolley would be a successful mayor? Uh, just in my conversations with uh, Tim. Uh, one thing I liked about him was he had some military experience. Mm -hmm. uh, that background is very helpful. Um, I understood he was pro law enforcement, uh, pro fire. You know, he mm -hmm. was uh, interested in that, and which is very important in the city. Angie Winton, uh, city council member. What have you seen so far from him in his year plus as mayor? Are you satisfied with what you see? Yeah, I think. Um the focus on public safety is probably the most important. I know we made some changes to the police contract to allow the lateral moves uh, because there was such a shortage of police officers. And public safety is quite honestly one of the public's most important items, I would say, from a municipal standpoint. So being able to fill those positions has been critical. And then I think focusing on things like recreation, um, there's still just tons of activities that our city does with recreation, the, the dances, the um, holiday events, and then the Lang Park, you know, progressing on that is going to be huge. It's, it's like getting a, a county park or a state park in our city um, that'll attract a lot of visitors. Kimber, you and I talked earlier and you were talking about differences in customer service that you've noticed. Uh, you've served in two different administrations. Yes. Uh, can you expound upon that? With Tim, he wanted more people to be able to address more issues, and that's what we're doing. Um, we, I still handle a lot of the residents that come in, and so does Michelle. And, um, and sometimes that's hard to do with a very busy schedule. So if Tim's in meetings, which he is most of the days, um, throughout the day, I'm available and then so is Michelle. So they, they always have somebody that they're able to, to reach to get an answer, to get um, some direction on whatever the situation is, whatever their issue is. Okay, Michelle, you're in a somewhat unique position with Tim. Old friend, worked for him, worked with him as he was a councilman while you were council secretary, then, uh, then worked directly with him when he was the chair now he's the mayor. What type of things do you think brought him to where he's at now as mayor? Honestly, I think um, I can go back when I, when he won his council position in 2013. Mm -hmm. And I was actually in the call center at that time. And I remember um, Tim coming in and he sat in the call center and he said he was gonna sit in every department because he was new to this position and he needed to learn to, to make the best decisions. Um, so he did, he sat in many departments, he did some ride-alongs, um, he was eager to learn. Um, and then I actually moved into council assistant in 2016 and worked with him again um, in that, in a different role. Um, but he was still, he did his due diligence, he did his homework, he looked into a lot of things. Um, so, so he, he always said, I want to make sure I know so I can make the best decision and vote for what I feel is the best for the residents, number one, and for the city, number two. Um, so I think that at that time when I'd seen him, and I haven't, I had never noticed any other council people. There has been a couple here or there um, to come and sit in an apartment. And, it, and even at that time, the manager was like, what is this, you know? So it, it was different, but it was also nice to, to see that somebody was going to take that on and learn rather than just come in and, and not know, you know? So I, I thought that was one thing that the city could benefit from. Pat Woolley, did you ever think your son would become mayor? No. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. in fact, we're just talking about it. I, 
I was actually shocked when he even ran for the, uh, the council. And, but when he told me he was going to run for mayor, I went, you sure you know what you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> even, his, you? even his brother was shocked. Has he changed at all? No. 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 Seem no. To change to me either. No. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> no. Uh, like I said, we live the same. You know, this we we we're, we're the same people. What did you see in Tim Woolley that you thought uh, that made you support him for mayor? Um, you know, Tim's one of the most loyal people I've ever known. His uh, his honesty, his tenacity, his uh, stick to of this of this, um, and uh, his ability to work with people and to get things done. He's a go-getter. I mean, there's no question about it. Once he wants something, he's pretty strong about it. Tim being a team player, he, you know, he does try to work as best as he can with each director, each department head, and the, and the council. He, he really wants to be able to have face time with as many residents as he can. He's not afraid. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I appreciate that in him that, uh, you know, he will listen to things and uh, go from there with it. I think being willing to step in and actually do the work makes a good leader. You know, not someone who just delegates tasks, but actually willing to jump in and do the work. And I see that in Tim. Describe Tim Woolley in one word. Uh, I would say honesty. Genuine. I would say honorable. Well, that's easy. Humble. I would say a loyal. Giving. Wow. <laughs> um. Ooh, fantastic. I'm going to use fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Pat Woolley, you get the honor of introducing the mayor. Well, I just want to let you know that this is Tim Woolley, that's a mayor of the city of Taylor. This is pretty good for a kid his mother didn't even want. <laughs> Tim Woolley. <laughs> well, I want to thank everybody. And as you can see, I, I try to keep things light. So uh, I'm definitely going to have to buy a lot of beers after all those nice things everybody said about me. Um, we kind of threw, there in, threw that in there as a last minute joke with Amy. She actually uh, called me a leader there. So that does show you that she does, she does actually like me sometimes. Um, a quick story on, on what my dad had said. Um, you know, back my mom had already had three kids. My dad wanted another one. My mom uh, didn't necessarily want another one at that time. Um, turns out um, she, she ended up getting pregnant with me. Uh, wasn't super happy about it, but uh, it's kind of been a long-running joke in my family. Um, anybody that knew my mom, she was the sweetest, most gullible person in the world, and my dad would never let her live it down. You know, he would always say, well, you didn't want him in the first place or something like that, and my mom would get so mad, and she'd always look at me and go, now you know I love you, right? <laughs> so just a little background on that, but, um, you know, definitely try to keep things light and funny. Um, uh, so... Uh, I do want to thank everybody for coming here tonight. It's, uh, it's such a great honor to see everybody here and to help with such a great cause. Um, Rotary is such a great group of people, uh, selfless, uh, willing to help so many different people and organizations. Um, the more I started getting more involved, I decided, yes, I definitely wanted to be a member of this group, um, which I proudly am. And uh, I appreciate the help in any way I can. But uh, basically, the members of this Rotary go above and beyond on a regular basis, and uh, I want to thank them for that. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, here we go. I want to make sure we're on the right one. So I got a quote here from Winston Churchill, and it says, Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. And that, we kind of touched on that because there are some things that we try that may, might not have worked that well. So we're going to continue to just keep working on things that do and, and work through uh, obstacles that didn't. And um, that's one of the things I think we've been so successful at. And, and I want to really comm you know, commend my team for doing that. Uh, we're not afraid to sit in a room and, and hash things out. And, and it just shows you with the, the speakers we had up here already, you know, that's just a small percentage of such a great team 
that I work with on a daily basis. Uh, the directors in the city are incredible. The employees are incredible. And I'm, I'm really honored to be a part of the team with them because they really work as a team. I think that's something that I've tried to promote the entire time that I've been here. And uh, I think it's really working out that way. So again, I want to thank all my, my team and my directors and all the employees that are here tonight. I got a little nervous when Carl asked all the employees to stand up. I'm like, who's in City Hall right now? <laughs> so I, I do want to thank all of them. Uh, the other thing I want to touch on too is, you know, I really want to thank my, my city council. You know, without their help and uh, their support, you know, there's a lot of things that we wouldn't be able to do. So. I really appreciate them willing to listen and, and talk about things and you know of course we don't always agree but at the end of the day all the successes is based on them voting to allow the funds to make that happen and uh, I want to also thank them because especially with this new year you know we're kind of post COVID you know but it's still prevalent because I can tell you that a couple members are, or a couple people are not here today because they are homesick with COVID right now so praying for hopefully uh, they get better soon. But, you know, it's also created some obstacles that has made us work on the fly a little bit. Where, you know, we're learning now like state funding for vehicles is kind of going away right now because there's no vehicles to begin with. And, and equipment, we're looking at possibly a year to two years out. You know, so we're kind of gathering information now to try to figure, you know, hey, we need to put in order for this now and we might not get it for another year or two. Um, but City Council has been great because there's been a few opportunities to where, um, you know, we had a, a, a car dealer, we were, were looking for vehicles for our water, uh, our water assistance program where there's no vehicles to be had and through relationships we had a, an auto a dealer reach out to us and said, hey, somebody uh, backed out of their transit vehicle. So we were able to go ahead and get that in front of council, council thankfully approved that, and we were able to get a vehicle right away. So there's been a lot of give and take and, and a lot of uh, adjusting on the fly. So uh, I really want to thank city council for allowing us to do that. It's, uh, it's made uh, things a lot easier, and we've been able to score a few vehicles a lot quicker than we thought. So uh, that's been a great thing. So. Um, I want to start off with roads, infrastructure improvements. Our road improvements has basically been a lot of work that has already pre-started prior to me coming in. I was approval, I, you know, I did approve this project when I was on city council. But the Goddard and Party project is pretty much completely wrapped. Um, we're still coming up with the amount of funds left over from what was bonded. And uh, I'm happy to say there is going to be some money left over that we're going to continue to complete Beach Daily Road. Um, we've done over the last probably four or five years, with the exception of last year or the year before, we did Beach Daily all the way from Pennsylvania all the way to Wick Road. So hopefully this year we're going to be able to continue going from, uh, did I say West Road? I meant Wick Road. But uh, Wick Road to Van Bourne. And, uh, those are the two sections that hadn't been done yet. So we're going to look on that pending approval. We want to get Beach Daily completely finished. Um, the other big project we started this year we, we had a lot of issues with uh, Superior Parkway, which is right over by the Taylor, Support, Taylor Sportsplex. We had, at a time, what was called bad cement. When that, when that road was put in, there was a lot of issues with the cement, so there had been a lot of block replacement going on. And it just got to the point where if you fixed a block in the cement, all the cement around it was failing. So uh, sitting down with our city engineer um, and our DPW director and Mr. Bazura here, we decided to just go ahead and completely redo uh, Superior Parkway. Um, that project turned out great. And again, I want to thank City Council for approving it, as well as the TIFA board, because it was kind of split between the two of them. And we did end up winning an APWA award for that project. So um, kudos to uh, our engineer and our DPW. And uh, I think uh, both Hennessy and, I'm not sure. I know Hennessy was part of that award as well. So. Uh, I want to thank everybody that was involved in that project, and that turned out really well for us. My slides are one new. So road improvements. These are the city streets that are going to be repaved over the next, uh, hopefully, I think uh, I'm going to hold him to it because he's sitting in the back room. He said uh, starting in April we should be starting to hit these streets. So uh, these are the list of streets that are on the list to be uh, 
uh, repay or we re asphalted. Our major improvement projects are which Wick Road from Beach Daily to Telegraph is scheduled to be resurfaced in late 2023. Uh, Wayne County is scheduled to resurface Van Bourne Road from Beach Daily uh, to, to, to Telegraph. And Wayne County is also scheduled to resurface Pelham Road from E Course to uh, Van Bourne. Uh, we're also getting ready to do some, uh, there's going to be some railway improvements. We're really excited to, uh, about this. Um, since we're talking about railway, I know a lot of, uh, in the city we received a lot of complaints uh, for the railroad, uh, the train blocking Beach Daily Road on a regular basis. I know it's very frustrating for me as well, uh, but after talking to Senator Geis uh, yesterday, she had a great conversation, so we're going to start seeing a little more uh, uh, relief from that, uh, hopefully completely. But uh, I was very happy to hear um, from Senator Geis yesterday and she talked with them and so therefore Beach Daily is not going to be blocked pretty much uh, almost on a daily basis it seemed like. But uh, these are the, the rails, the railways that are going to be uh, redone, you know, basically going over the tracks. Um, and Rose Street is scheduled for June 15th. Hardy Road is scheduled for June 15th. Uh, Holland Road June 19th and Inkster Road on June 20th. So that'll make that bump a little less uh, bumpier. Other projects we're looking at doing is the city is currently has plans to invest over $5 million in water and sewer main infrastructure this year. Um, we're kind of doing that in combination with, uh, with uh, Wick Road. Uh, we're we're going to do a big project down Wick Road, which is going to increase the, uh, the water capacity down the drain there, um, or down flow down Wick Road. And so we're going to try to combine those projects at the same time. And uh, that'll work out best or better for those residents in that area, and as well as the city. Uh, we're still trying to work on some variances um, on that, but uh, it's going to be a really nice, successful project, or a great project when it's uh, completed. You all right, Carl? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got Carl crawling around on the floor over here, so I'm a little concerned. Uh, <laughs> So next we're going to talk about our streetlight project. Um, pretty happy about this one. So um, going forward, as probably a lot of you have seen already driving down Telegraph, um, for the last couple years we kind of had like a strobe effect in some areas. We had lights out in other areas. Uh, it was really becoming an issue. Um, those, those lights are beautiful. You know, when they, they were purchased in the 80s, uh, I think it was the 80s or maybe early 90s, um, Ron could probably put 2000. 2000. Okay, 20 years ago. Um, beautiful lights. But over the time, as many of you have seen, um, those are special order lights and they're very expensive. And if you drive down Telegraph, if the lights are not out or blinking, they're usually laying on the ground. So we have a lot of people on Telegraph Road that tend to hit those lights. Um, and then we have to try and track those people down to get them to pay for it. Uh, so the collection rate is really not well, uh, not very good when, when we try to do that. So we sat down with DTE and tried to come up with a plan. And um, we decided, literally, when we buy those special order lights, we have to store them over at our DPW. And we usually have to buy them like in 10 and 12s. So that's pretty costly to the city of Taylor. But the rate they get knocked down it just seemed like an endless pit, and we decided, let's sit down with DTE, what we can do. So then we, we met with DTE and came up with a, a new replacement lights that look almost identical to the lights we currently have. They're not quite as ornate, they don't have the skirt at the bottom, but they're the same teardrop feature, and those are now a stock light at DTE. So therefore, we don't have to store them anymore, we don't have to buy them in, in, uh, in, in parcels, basically. We can just, when a light gets knocked down, we contact DTE and they come out and replace it at no cost. Now there is an upfront cost at the beginning. Uh, we do have to replace the lights. We have to put new uh, moorings in for the cement and everything like that. So I think it's close to uh, almost a $2 million investment, which our TIPA has uh, already voted in to, to do and, and approve. So at the end of the day, it's going to basically save us between three and four hundred thousand dollars a year. 
So it's not going to take us long to recoup on our investment and then moving forward. It's going to save us quite a bit of money every year from those lights that are just constantly getting knocked over. Um, so very happy with that. And I think the new uh, wiring and stuff is going to prevent the, the lights from going out because if you, if you see if one light goes out, that entire stretch is, usually goes out or something like that. So um, we are definitely going to uh, move forward on that. They're, they're actually moving really quickly on that already. They're, they're pouring the foundations of the lights, so we should start seeing the lights here, I think, in the next month or two. Um, I think that's a great project, and as well, I, de I definitely want to thank my, our TIPA board for approving that. And uh, it's going to make, I think, those lights a lot more, uh, you know, easier to maintain. It basically takes it off our plate and gives it to DTE. Um, we just got to make sure DTE gets out there and gets those lights fixed as soon as they get knocked down. So, um, Moving forward, we're going to talk about some DPW improvements. You know, last year we came up with a concept about, you know, hey, let's let people hear it from the professionals instead of me coming up here acting like I know what I'm talking about um, to the details that they know. You know, so we decided to get the directors up here to where you could hear it from them. Um, last year, Ralph, our DPW director, um, was one of the speakers. And I said, okay, well, you know, we, we wanted to change it up a little bit, but there was so much happening in the police and in the parks. So Guido and, and Chief Blair did get the call again this year. I want to thank Laura for coming up and doing a great job on planning. So we'll try to have some different people up there. So I kind of told Ralph, I'll, I'll, I'll handle the reins for DPW, just make some notes and lists for Carl and stuff, and then when we sat down, I'm like, geez, there's so much going on in DPW, I should have had Ralph back up here speaking <laughs> on this. So, um, But there's a lot of exciting things going on in, um, in DPW. Uh, equipment improvements is number the, one of the biggest things we've been doing quite a bit. Um, something as simple as this slope master mower. It allows us to cut grass safely on embankments. So if you drive down like Monroe, you see, you see that grass is maintain way more or a lot more than what it used to be in, in the past and this mower allows us to do it because it is a remote control lawnmower to where our, our our employee can just sit there with a remote and cut that grass so we're probably doing it probably let's say four to five times as much as what we used to and, and people notice that so I, I, I'm, I notice it and I think it's a great improvement and I think it was a, a great investment and I'm really happy to see yeah. Um, that it's, it's really paying for itself, in my opinion. The other thing we purchased was a directional boring machine, which is allowing us to do a lot of our own um, work when, you know, doing water to the houses, you know, replacing those pipes and stuff. And we're actually going to use it for some uh, work over at Heritage Park to run uh, <coughs> the cable guido that's uh, fiber, you know, fiber optic cable to allow us to do some things when it comes to the... Uh, the uh, summer festival. So um, it's nice to start getting these tools to allow us to do things that, you know, in house. And we're able to get them a lot quicker or get it done quicker. We don't have to schedule it as far out. Um, some other improvements are uh, definitely um, with our equipment. We, you know, we've decreased in efficiency quite a bit. And I, I'm really happy about that. Our street sweepers. People all the time are saying, you know, they're very happy with how much they're seeing the street sweepers out there. Um, you know, we, we're able to track where our street sweepers, um, you know, sometimes we do get complaints in that people say, well, you know, we never see the street sweepers. Well, they're usually out there when a lot of people are at work and we're able to go in. So normally when I get a call or a complaint, I can go on the computer and see that street sweeper was on that street either two or three days ago. So it, it's kind of nice to have something that backs up, you know. Um, to prove that we went out there. Um, and, you know, our staff does a great job of uh, getting out there and, and, and making that happen, and they do a great job. Um, we got a new screener over at the compost center. Um, a lot of people don't realize, but the city of Taylor has, uh, we, we use our, uh, our compost that's collected, and it's brought back to our compost site over on Racco Road. And we have some of the best compost around. So if you like the garden, you have a nice flower garden, a lot of times, um, residents, I think, do we get, I'm not sure if they get that for free or not. Um, I think they get a discounted rate, I know that. And, uh, but we have a lot of uh, businesses that come in and buy our compost on a regular basis. So if you're into gardening, definitely check out our compost site in the summertime. Um, we're usually uh, moving pretty good on the compost, but we have some of the best around as well. Um, 
Um, some other improvements is we purchased a hydro excavator for those hard to, you know, for hard to get uh, to the vacuum excavation while reducing the area of the restoration. Um, this makes the area a lot smaller, it's easier to uh, clean up, and it's uh, definitely helped a lot better as far as cleaning out our drains and everything like, like that. Um, a lot of people seen, you know, this was one, of, one thing we did kind of have a little bit of an issue with uh, equipment though, but we did bring our tree trimming um, back into the city. Um, our foreman has done a great job of training. Uh, we, we've got a lot of new employees in our DPW, and um, they're learning the, the process of the tree trimming and the removal. Um, unfortunately, we had a couple issues with boom trucks this year, which kind of put us a little behind. Um, so when we were continuing our good to great, we were behind on our tree trimming, and I think we're starting to get uh, caught up a little bit. Um, thankfully, our parks department has helped us out in a few times to where we could borrow their boom truck for uh, tree situations. Um, but um, you know, this is uh, the you know we're we're able to tackle ordinance issues. The tree crew has performed 122 trims, 119 cut downs, and looking to purchase a stump grinder for uh, the use of in house. That was one of the one issues that we had this year is when we took down the tree. It, it was quite a wait time to get the tree, um, yeah, to get the stump grinded out to where we could get somebody in there to replant the tree. Um, so um, we're actually in the process right now of trying to secure bids for a, 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 a stump grinder to take to council. Another topic is staffing increases. We've added more. We've added five more employees to our DPW staff. Recently created two more clerical positions to receive the DPW and water department related calls, lessening the burden on our call center. Um, you know, this was something we were talking about retooling our call center when I got elected. Um, Ralph came to us. Uh, one thing I love about Ralph, our director of DPW, when, when Ralph comes to me and Dan usually with a problem, he always has a solution. I love that. He says, hey, Mayor, what do we think about doing? So he was one, you know, we were talking about doing some samples of trying to get um, some of our operators in our customer assistance center to other departments, and we're still in that process, but DPW was definitely our first um, experiment because DPW is a vast majority of the calls we get on a regular basis in our call center. So we took a, a person out of our call center, uh, moved them down to DPW, and uh, as well as a water department, and we also added another clerical person in there. And literally, our DPW receives all the DPW and water related calls now, and it has been tremendous. Um, it has definitely uh, lessened the burden on our call center, and so far, that has been working great to where we're going to continue to look at doing that in other departments. So, um, that was a, something that we tried and really worked well. The next topic is funding uh, effectively. We, uh, you know, we've had a few things that uh, we've been able to do to kind of save us money. Um, everybody knows inflation is up anywhere from five to 10%, everything seems to be going up. So one of the things we've tried to do uh, with council approval has been to extend current contracts. If we're getting close to an end of a contract and we can talk with the vendor or the vendor sometimes reach out, reaches out to us and says, hey, um, we're willing to keep our prices the same or just a 2% or 3% increase, would you guys be interested in that? And, and we've been doing that and um, you know, we've done that with Priority Waste, our garbage company, Al's Asphalt who does our uh, asphalt and cement as well as a bit of Gary Pipeline. They reline our, our pipes out there and uh, it's, it's actually been a cost savings to the city. So again, I appreciate those vendors for reaching out and working with us and our council for approving those extensions. Uh, the cost savings have been anywhere from three to 10%, you know, battling inflation. Uh, next topic is the importance of hiring. I think everybody sitting in the room that has anything to do with business realizes that this is not just a city of Taylor problem. This seems to be a, a you know, a, a country, you know, this is a problem in our country. Everybody is trying to find workers. So, um, Make sure I'm on the same slide. I apologize. Um, you know, one of the things we've been trying to do is think of new ways, thinking outside of the box, to try to bring in new employees. Um, one of the things, you know, that 
I focused on was getting more people here in our police department. You know, we, we wanted to increase our numbers. Um, 14 new officers under this current administration, plus six public service officers over the last roughly year and a half. Um, the lateral program was a great success. Sat down with uh, my chief of staff, Dan, as well as uh, the police chief and the deputy chief at that time, and um, just kind of went over things that we thought might be able to get officers to want to come to the city of Taylor. Um, and when we first put that out, we had a lot of interest and a lot of people came over right away. And talking to those officers that are now here, they love that they came, you know, and that, and that, that goes a long way and that means a lot. And we're gonna continue to do things because when we started that, it was really, we were getting, gaining a lot of momentum and then a lot of other cities started doing the same thing. So that kind of slowed things down a little bit. Um, and, but we're gonna continue to think of ways that we can try to get police officers as well as, uh, you know, public safety officers, fire department, to get people that wanna come here and be a part of the team here at Taylor. Um, you know, the, the one great thing is too, is um, through those laterals, we were able to diversify our, our police, you know, department. And I'm happy about that, because when, you know, I, I'm gonna say it the way it is, when I came in here, Taylor police, they were all white. You know, and that's a problem. You know, the city of Taylor is very diverse, and I think everybody should be represented. So through this uh, lateral program, I always said, when we go through this lateral program, we want to increase our, you know, our, our, you know, diversity. But we want to hire the best officers. I don't care what their, their sex is, what their color is, we want the best officers here. And that's what we did. But even doing that, we were able to diversify our force. And to me, I think that's a, you know, a, a great thing for the city of Taylor as well as our police department. And I'm very happy about that. Uh, the fire department. Ambulance and fire runs um, have been, uh, you know, definitely busy as usual. Um, you know, our EMTs, we're transitioning them into firefighters. Uh, so now we're actually hiring some EMTs to fill so many slots. And through that, we give them the opportunity to become a paramedic. Uh, firefighter. So in a way it's kind of a, a feeder program and we're actually working with Wayne County Community Co College to extend that to where we got a, you know, from the high school to the college to our fire department. So uh, that's been pretty successful still in the beginning stages. Really, really happy about that. Our staff went from 32 to 42 over the last year. Um, we're still a few people short, um, but literally our fire department is almost at capacity, which I'm really happy about. Um, we're always looking out for both police and fire to add equipment and technology. Uh, it makes their jobs easier and it makes their jobs safer. Um, you know, I tell our public safety, uh, you know, our police and fire that it's their responsibility to go home to their family at the end of the night too. And, and I think a lot of people realize that, that they're, they're putting their lives on the line on a regular basis. And with equipment and technology, we have the opportunity to make them safer and all of us in this room safer as well as everybody in our community. Um, that goes a long way and we're going to continue to do that. If there's equipment out there that we can afford that we think is going to be a, a good fit for the city of Taylor and make our um, public safety officers safer, um, we're going to try to do that the best we can. And we've shown that we have done that. Um, now we're going to transition into our financial overview. We had an audit of 2022. Plant Moran issued the city a clean audit, which I'm very happy about. Uh, I want to thank my uh, budget and finance department for doing such a great job on that. Uh, Jason Kocher, I don't know if he's here. I haven't seen him yet. Um, he was supposed to be here. But uh, we are very lucky. We have a CFO that just, I can't imagine not having him. He's incredible. And he is so good with funds. And. Uh, I just want to really thank that department because that just shows what kind, what type of team we have, not just in budget, budget and finance, but also in the entire city. Um, getting that clean audit was uh, always a good thing. And luckily Taylor has been down that road for quite a while now, so I uh, want to keep that uh, coming in that way. Uh, the general funds unassigned balance sat at 11.1 million, 11 .1 million, or 25% of our current year's uh, expenditures in June. Um, we just had a new bond rating from Moody's. Uh, Moody's Investor Service had, has upgraded the city's bond rating from an A2 to a B2, which is actually three spots, which uh, we were very happy about that. Wasn't expecting it. We were hoping 
for, you know, we were expecting one, we were pushing for two, and then when we got three spots, uh, we were all pleasantly surprised, and uh, we're gonna be reaching out to one of our other bond uh, companies to uh, give us a new rating as well. Um, the issuer rating reflects the city's credit quality and the ability to repay debt and debt-like op obligations. So it's kind of showing that our bond ratings are going up because Taylor's paying its bills. We're running a, uh, a tight budget and we're running it well. So that definitely shows that we're improving on our, uh, our bond ratings. Control and legacy costs. <coughs> Legacy costs, liabilities continue to decline, now sit at just over $219 million, which is a lot of money. But at one time, there was no funding in this, uh, in, in this uh, actual OPEB at all. So we're gonna continue to chip away at that. The Taylor's OPEB has continued to decrease. The city has paid its debt by making an annual contribution. At one time, Taylor had the highest unfunded OPEB liability in Michigan, but has fallen over $200 million to, a, or from, has fallen over $200 million to $110 million. Uh, that was something through uh, Jason in the last administration. Uh, the state came down and kind of said, hey, you have no money in this and you need to start uh, putting funds toward this. Um, the previous administration got with council, said, hey, this is how we're going to tackle that. And, and luckily, it's, it's worked out well, and we're continuing to chip away at that, and it's definitely lowering our costs. Customer service. This is very important with me. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I know there's issues with uh, customer service. It's not our employees. You know, some of it has to do with technology. Some of it, there's a, there's a lot of things that have to do with that. But I want to say that our customer assistance center, they work their butts off, but that phone rings a lot. And so we're looking at technology that can streamline this, where people can go online and do more things um, to lessen the burden in our call center, as well as just moving certain calls to different departments, which lessens that. But at the end of the day, we want people to be able to reach out and be able to talk to somebody in a, in a sufficient amount of time and help them with their pro problems. Um, you know, there's a lot of repeat calls, but I think there's things that we can do just either through the website, which we're looking at doing, um, but you know, the direct line to DPW and the water department has uh, greatly uh, increased our call volume, or lessened the call volume in the call center. So, and then it makes it a little easier. One of the reasons, with, you know, when the call center was created, that was when we were in our deficit elimination. So they, they basically took people out of the departments and put them in one and said everything. Well, when they did that, everybody that went into that call center had worked for the city for quite a while. And most of them had worked in two, three, sometimes four departments. And if one person didn't work in the, in the department that the call was, the person sitting either right next to them or across from them did. So literally they could put them on hold, yell across the table, hey, get the answer and be able to answer that question. Well, over the years, there's been such a turnaround. Everybody in our customer assistance center, with the exception of maybe one, has been here less than maybe two, three years. So they don't have that experience that all the others did when this was first created. And that's why we've really seen, uh, you know, more time waiting, and so they have to do their due diligence a little more to get the answer. And whether, you know, sometimes it's literally having to put somebody on hold, walk over to, either a their manager or the department next, you know, either building or planning, and, and that takes time. So through training, um, updating our IT situation, you know, computer programs to where people can go on the website and do things easier. Um, we did, uh, you know, we did have an issue with uh, one of our servers, so the iCare was down, but if people click on iCare, it still works. It's just something different now. It's it's an easy to use form, but they can still click on that and that takes them to the link. Um, also, you know, the increase in my department. Um, you know, some people weren't happy that I took another individual, you know, another person up into my department, but I wanted people to be able to either reach out to the mayor's department or come to the mayor's department. Um, basically, almost on a weekly basis, um, as it said in the video, I am in a lot of meetings, um, but, the, the security guard knows down front if somebody comes in and wants to speak to the mayor, the first thing he does is call up to the office 
And if I'm available, Kimber, I'm going to walk in my office and say, hey, there's a resident that wants to meet with you. Send them up. i got 15 minutes. So I want to be able to talk to people. And when I get the opportunity, I do. And when I don't, Kimber, Michelle, or Dan, or Sam are right down there with them. I want people, like Kimber said in that intro, to, I want people to be heard. Sometimes that's all people want, is to be heard. And I get it. So I think I want to commend my department for making that happen, because it has happened. And I can't tell you how many people, when they say, I want to talk to the mayor, and they're up in my office in five minutes, five minutes later, they're going, the first thing out of their mouth is, I can't believe you're meeting with me right now. Well, you know what, I'm happy about that. I'm proud of that, because that's what I want. If people want FaceTime with me, I tell them to schedule it. If they pop in and I'm available, I'm gonna meet with them. And I'm gonna to continue to do that. I'm not afraid to tell people what they don't wanna hear sometimes, but I at least want them to hear it from me. And I'm being 100% honest when I tell them that. Because sometimes people want answers, but they don't want the real answer. And I understand that, but I'm not gonna to lie to people just to string them along. When they come up and ask a question, if it's something I can help them with, I'm gonna. If it's something that I can't, um, I, there's nothing I can do. Neighbor disputes, tickets. I can't really, there's not a whole lot I can do there. Basically, you know, it's, uh, you know, you, you got to tell it to the judge. You know, they, they make the decisions on there. So, um, you know, it gives me the opportunity to deflect sometimes and throw the judges under the bus. <laughs> you know, but no, I, I at least send them in the right direction. Um, but um, I think being able to talk to the residents, and when I'm out and about, I'm glad that people are comfortable enough, you know, my wife can say, you know, when we go out to dinner or breakfast or something, people come up and they're not afraid to ask me questions or, you know, whatever, and I'm happy to help them. I'm going to continue to do that. And so far, luckily, everyone has been nice. <laughs> um, communications, you know, one of the things I wanted to do, and, I, and I, uh, I'm going to give myself some grief over this one. I probably should have had at least one or two more of these. Um, did start the coffee with the mayor, just had one probably a month or two ago at the senior center, which I thought went really well. Uh, I'm going to try to do these at least quarterly in different areas of the city. That way people don't have to tra travel far. And, um, you know, but as, like I said, anytime if somebody wants to schedule some time with me, reach out to my office and, and I will schedule some time to meet with you. Um, you know, through the, uh, I hate this name, and I told Carl we're going to change this. Um, the Tim Woolley Show on the, on the cable channel has been, uh, I think, from the feedback that I get, it seems to be well received. Um, I just wanted a casual kind of talk show, ask me questions, and uh, Carl is great at being able to make me feel comfortable and just have a good talk with him. And we're doing that, we're expanding that. We've. Um, you know, city council members have taken advantage of that. I think it's great. We're going to do a, uh, a, a new one with our, our newly electeds, uh, the new senators, um, and our new uh, state representatives so that people at Taylor can get to know and, and learn them, as well as we're going to be doing uh, basically meet your, your public safety. We're going to have uh, groups of few firefighters and then police officers that go down there so you can actually learn the names. When I was a kid in Taylor, I knew the police officers' names. When we were playing baseball or basketball or football, they would stop. You know, you had neighborhood patrols back then, and we knew all the officers, and they weren't afraid to get out and throw the ball with us or shoot hoops, but they'd also give us that lecture where, hey, you guys better keep straight because we're cool, but once you screw up, you know, we're going to get you. So, um, and I think that was a nice touch. So this is a way to use technology to get people to know and learn the names of our police officers and a little bit about them as well as our fire department. Um, we're going to continue to keep doing that as well with other departments. Um, little tutorials that we do, like around tax time, um, you know, definitely around election time with Cindy and her team. Um, you know, Treasure Toco did one for tax collection. Um, it's just a nice way to get information out there. And we also, uh, you know, as time fillers, what we do is we've reached out to everybody in the community. If you're watching this now and you're a veteran, and we do these little, sometimes there's one show might finish in 40 minutes, the next one might be, if there's gaps of time, we're doing the veteran bios as well. So anybody that is a veteran that lives in the city of Taylor, if you click on that show, sometimes you'll see it. Um, I was luckily I was lucky to do it with my dad, so that was kind of cool. Um, a couple other things we're doing is uh, the live streaming of Cablecast, the council meetings. 
Um, that goes a long way. Um, we did have a little bit of an issue over the last month or two where we weren't able to live stream, but we do run it on the cable channel uh, live, and then we run it a couple times during the week. Um, but I think the problem was fixed, and I think the last meeting we were up live streaming again, and I believe this is being live streamed right now as well. So um, moving on, I'm getting to uh, wrap it up, will we? <laughs> so moving on to the checklist. You know, there was a few things I just wanted to touch on. Um, I, I'm very happy about, you know, our, our hiring of the public safety. We're going to continue to go down that road as best as we can. Um, knocking on a lot of doors, a lot of people. Public safety is the number one priority on the city of Taylor. And I say it all the time, that's my number one priority as a resident. So we're going to continue to focus on that, trying to find new ways to get people to come and join our team. Uh, as Guido touched on, lighting up the back of Heritage Park was a big thing that I wanted to concentrate on as well because it gets very dark out there and that people use that park you know, from dusk to dawn. And I think it's, you know, when it gets darker earlier, it, it gets very dark back there. We're going to light that up a little bit, especially in that back corner, um, just to kind of shed some light over there to maybe keep people in there that we don't want in there, uh, keep people out of there that we don't want hanging out in there. Um, the retooling of our Customer Assistance Center, um, we're continuing to do that. We're uh, continuing to upgrade our IT department. This was something else. Um, we, we've had quite a few obstacles in that department, but we're continuing to fight through them. Uh, it definitely knocked us back a few steps. Um, we did have a, a major malfunction there, and um, we're, we're rebuilding, and we're gonna get that. So help me, we're gonna get it to the 21st century as quick as we can. Um, one of the other things is, is just overcoming the, the challenges of you know this the new world we live in, trying to find product availability and, and learning to basically really, it's kind of hard to explain, but try to get equipment, product in here as quick as we can without trying to figure a way how we can streamline that. We're going to continue to do that. And then, um, you know, in closing, I just want to say that you know, it's been a little over a year now. I'm still very honored and very humbled to be in this position. There's still on a regular basis, I still can't believe I'm the mayor of the city of Taylor. But I'm very happy to hold that position. And I'm gonna to continue to work just as hard every day as I've been doing. And that's the one thing I wanna say that I, don't, I, I do everything I can for the betterment of this community. Because I love it, and at the end of the day, I'm gonna be here. When I'm not the mayor of Taylor anymore, I'm going to be over on Champagne Street. Um, a huge shout out to uh, my com my comrade in arms, uh, Mr. Bazur over there, who's on his phone right now doing work. Uh, he, uh, you know, he works. He's here all day, every day, and uh, I couldn't ask for a better teammate. Me and him work well together. I hope he agrees with that. Um, I knew from the get go that that was the guy I wanted by my side when I decided this when I decided to do this. And I, I think the, my lucky star is every day that he decided that he agreed with me. Um, but again, I wanna thank everybody for coming today. It's so nice to see so many friends and family here um, to honor a great group of people in the Rotary that do so much good for our community. Um, again, it makes my heart you know, skip a beat here to see so many people here that's willing to help this great cause. And um, by any means, if you ever need anything, just reach out. Thank you very much, Tim. You know what, I got cut off a little bit early, but I do want to just touch on one thing, Larry, I apologize. Um, our sportsplex and our golf courses, as you can see, we, we purposely left these windows open out here, just to show you what a great golf course we have here. Our golf team has done a phenomenal job and for the first time since I can remember being elected, we're not gonna to have to put money into the golf course uh, budget this year. So that's just a credit to the management, everybody here, um, as well as our Sportsplex are continuing to do a great job. Um, our, our Taylor Sportsplex is a one of a kind place. Um, if, you ever, if you haven't been there and you get a chance to do it, please check it out. But if you want, when we're all done here, take a walk around downstairs, the pro shop will be open. 
and come joy either to Lakes of Taylor or Taylor Meadows, both beautiful golf courses in the city of Taylor. And I want to commend the staff for everything they've done to make it such a successful year this last year. So again, I'm sorry for uh, coming back up here, but I didn't want to forget them. So again, I appreciate everything.